What's up, everyone? Welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls 2. It is finally out. I finally have my hands on it. So like with the last two Souls LPs I did, which I'll link in the description, I'm going to start off explaining what it is I love about this series. I love the rich details, how crisp the mechanics are, how much there is to do, how deep the game is. There's a lot to love, but above all, I love the sense of discovery you get with the Souls games. But more on that in a little bit. I'm going to start things up with the opening cutscene. There's going to be plenty of time to gush later on. I don't want to just hang around on the main menu forever. Perhaps you've seen it. Maybe in a dream. A murky, forgotten land. Place where souls may mend your ailing mind. You will lose everything once branded the symbol of the curse, an augur of darkness. Your past, your future, your very light. None will have meaning, and you won't even care. By then, you'll be something other than human. A thing that feeds on souls, a hollow. Long ago, in a walled-off land far to the north, a great king built a great kingdom. I believe they called it Drang Lake. Perhaps you're familiar. No, how could you be? But one day, you will stand before its decrepit gate without really knowing why. Is your fate the fate of the cursed?
that felt like one of the bleakest intros yet. More personal, too. All about us, kinda. Pretty much saying that we're gonna die. That's a fact of life in this game. That we're gonna lose our souls, and if you lose your souls in the Dark Souls world, you go hollow. And... Hollowing out is pretty much going mad. And we are gripped by the undead curse, wherein we have to keep stealing souls to maintain our sanity. And when we die, we resurrect without souls, and eventually go mad. Pretty much carrying on the story from Dark Souls 1. So it seems like the Age of Fire is still going, actually. And yeah, this is a direct sequel to Dark Souls 2, uh, Dark Souls 1, I mean, uh, with some... As the developers put it, some time distortion or some sort of temporal element factored in. So who knows how the timeline is actually going to shake out. It's not a prequel like people originally thought. I see a hidden path off the bat. That's interesting. Giant footprints, though, that's, that's very foreboding. What in the shit is that? I have no weapon, so is this thing just going to immediately murder me? No, it doesn't look like it's going to attack me unprovoked. Okay, that's good. Um, he's guarding something, though. I see a little glimmer of an item. I'll be back for you. I'll be back for you, troll buddy. Is there anything in the river, maybe? I find it really interesting you don't start off with a character creator. Oh, that's probably where I'll get a weapon, and then I can go back and stab that big albino troll. Oh, I see something down there, though. Wait, do I have to leap to my death to get that? It looks like that might be the only way. Um, oh, wait a minute. Wait, I see a path. Ooh, I almost took a running leap straight off, and I that probably would have gotten me killed, because I probably would have collided with the tree, slid down the cliff face, and died. That would have been an embarrassing and very quick first death. Alright, so... And you know what? It would have been a first death for something that didn't look worthwhile. It was just a stupid stone. <laughs> what seems to be the ruckus? Oh my, your face. The face of the curse. It's an undead. An undead has come to play. <laughs> they all end up here. All the ones like you. You spoke to that kind old dear, didn't you? <laughs> You'll go hollow. Yes, you'll become one of them. Hollows prey upon men, feast upon their souls. This is the fate of the cursed. <laughs> your name? Ah, oh, I see. So, I happen to know there's a certain weapon in the game, and I am on a real berserk high right now, so... I believe I'm gonna name myself Guts. You. 
Alrighty. Let's choose a class now. See a lot of returning classes. No Pyromancer this time. I uh, see the Deprived. Let's see, the Warrior starts out level 12, 15 strength. I want something... That's looking good, actually. I want something with fairly high strength, low dex, and a balance of faith and intellect. That could work, too. Cleric. The Explorer looks ugly as sin. Yeah, that is your level, so he starts out soul level 12. The Deprived is a returning minimalist class. I'm thinking the Knight is what I want because he starts out with uh, 11 strength and 8 dex. I want 10 dex maximum. So let's choose uh, Gift. Life Ring seems like it could be useful early on. Human effigies are really useful. Healing wares are probably just life gems and maybe some poison removal stuff. Homeward Bones, I'm sure I'll get plenty of those. Uh, seed of a Tree Giant. Or Seed of a Tree of Giants. Uh, that turns enemies hostile on invaders. Bonfire Aesthetics. It might seem like a suicidal choice to pick that, but that's... I happen to know something about Bonfire Aesthetics that makes them really an appealing choice, which you'll find out why later. Simple Petrified Lump may be of some use someday. That is totally the Pendant 2.0, so I'm going with the Bonfire Aesthetic. Uh, now let's check the character creation options real quick. So the hair options are pretty limited. Overall, though, there is a ton of new stuff in the character creator. If that's your thing, you'll enjoy how extensive it is. I'm probably going to fast forward through all the character creation stuff. All people come here for the same reason. To break the curse. You're no different, I should think. Hmm. Doesn't stand a chance. Well, you never know. <laughs> Go through the door and trot along to the kingdom. But remember, hold on to your souls. They're all that keep you from going home. Oh, I'll fool you no longer. You lose your souls. All of them. Over and over again. Okay, so I have a couple of different uh, pathways I can go down, but first I'm going to talk to some of these old women. Not very talkative, this one. Uh, what about the rest of you? You must go on a journey without rest. Well, I suppose if you find yourself at an arm pass. But if your will is yet unbroken, then you may return here to start again with a clean slate. <laughs> now, go along, go along. <laughs> now, go along. <laughs> And it looks like only that one had anything interesting to say. What about you? This is a limbo. A link between Drangleic and the outer world. Fair traveler, I know that you must have a story. Why else would you visit such a place? This lost, decayed kingdom. My name is Millibeth. The old women were once fire keepers. I am here 
to look after them. It is what my mother did, and her mother before her, and so on. Oh my god, they're the fire keepers! The keepers of the fire. But now, the fire shows signs of fading. And the kingdom is beset by hollows. Okay, so the Age of Fire is waning once again. The old women are sisters. I am told there was a fourth. Long ago, fire keepers were commonplace. But now they are lost, scattered to the winds. The old women are sisters. Long oh my god, I want who were the Dark Souls one fire keepers? Anastasia, the Firelink one, uh Quelog's sister, and the Anne Orlando firekeeper. There used to be a four I wonder I wonder if they're the Dark Souls one firekeepers. That would be so No, I don't think that's even possible. Okay, we get a human effigy up there. Human effigies are really useful. Uh, the point of human effigies is they remove the death penalty. I think in this game you lose like 5 or 10% of your maximum HP per death, and that maxes out around 50. So effigies kind of function like stones of ephemeral eyes from Demon Souls. The dark sign is the brand that the cursed undead are branded with. Let's see, crystallized souls, bonfire ascetic. I'll explain what the bonfire ascetic does in due time when it comes time to actually use this item. Is so anything interesting in this description though? Oh, fire exhibits a connection with a curse. That banishes online invaders. Again, I'll explain how onlo the online systems and the invasions and stuff work. Oh, by the way, life gems are uh, new items. They're a lot like the healing grass in Demon Souls. They very slowly restore your HP over time, but you can crush them while you're moving around, so it's a nice trade-off. I wonder if they actually took Estus flasks out of the game, because I haven't gotten one yet. I'm wondering if I missed it. <laughs> Hope not. Maybe that's what the troll is guarding. Let's go kill him. Uh, anyway, more about human effigies and gifts. Gifts uh, on the character creation screen, if you're not familiar with the game, are just little extra boons to start you off with, to start you on your way. Anything that is a gift, like the bonfire uh, ascetic, the human effigies, the petrified, whatever, all that stuff you can find later in the game. That's the way it's always been. Also, the stats from the character creation are something I will explain probably the first time I level up when I have a... Oh, he doesn't attack until he's provoked. Uh, I'll explain what the stats do. I know they made some changes for Dark Souls 2. They added some new stats and changed how some of them work. Oh, to... Oh, and he just didn't fall over for the third one. Oh. It gives you just enough time... ...to get a hit in. Also, I have to be careful that I don't back myself into a corner. This is a fairly tough enemy for being, like, the first thing in the game you fight. Also, if I didn't point this earlier, look at the... the weapon UI, where the shield and the... right hand sword are. There are two red bars underneath them. I think those are now uh, your durability displays. That was never there in Dark Souls 1. So this thing is looks like fairly easy to fight, even though it looks like his punches are coming pretty close. He's one, two, fall over. This guy does not have great balance. Just, I keep worrying that I'm going to push myself up against a wall, and that's when he's... Oh, no. Spoke too soon. I stuck around a little bit too long. Oop. That was a risky little roll. Crush a life gem. Start to recover some HP. He's doing pretty much the same thing. I have to watch out for when he lunges, though. He does have, it looks like, at least one or two other attacks. Like that. Ooh. 
We'll finish him off. And what does he drop? Stone ring. What does that do? Additional reduction of enemy poise. Ooh, that's actually really good. Also, looks like rings have durability now. See a whole bunch of new names and new locations. Not a lot of which are relevant to me right now. Oh, right, poise. Uh, poise is what affects your resistance to being staggered or hit stunned. So if you're doing something and you have low poise, taking a hit is going to interrupt what you're doing. But if you have high poise, you can, for instance, attack while also being hit. So the more poise, the more resistant you are to that stuff. Uh, some attacks do more damage to your poise, though, and they stagger and interrupt you more easily. What's behind this wagon? The wagons don't just collapse immediately anymore. Uh, we got a torch. Torches are new items. They go in your offhand uh, slot, I think, your left-hand slot, and they provide light. So let's see how they work real quick. Uh, but first, I'm going to check out what's new at the bonfire. Right off the bat, I'm noticing there's no level-up option at the bonfire, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, you have an item box now. You start off with that. It's kind of like a stash. You used to have to buy a bottomless box. I like that change. And you can fast travel right away. That's really interesting. Because in Dark Souls 1, you needed the Lord Vessel, which you got like halfway through the game before you could warp between bonfires and effectively fast travel. It looks like uh, lighting a torch. You get five minutes on a torch. You can... Oh, wait. Did I just lose the torch by putting it away? No, I just have to relight it when I put it away. So you can't put it away and then pull it back out before you go to a bonfire. Okay, I see. Well, this already feels like a much larger, more extensive starting area and not just a small throwaway tutorial area. So I think I'm gonna fight the tutorial boss, if there even is one, next time and make my way out into the big, scary world in the next episode. Thanks for watching everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one.